Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the measurement tool. And the measurement tool is five tools down from the toolbox. And the sh keyboard shortcut to activate it is M. Okay, so the measurement tool is one of those tools that's gone under the radar for me, but it's an extremely promising tool. This tool works naturally for precision work and for schematic diagrams and technical diagrams that require measurements to be shown and measurements to be taken. So if we, we can activate the measurement tool without having objects present, but obviously we know the measurement tool will work best when we have objects to actually measure. But for the start, we're actually just going to activate it and see what we're presented with. And the first thing we see is, you may not see this when you use the measurement tool, but because I've used it already in this document, we see the last measurement that was made. And that leads me to the first point, is that the measurement tool records the last measurement that was made. So even when you toggle off of the measurement tool, the last measurement tool, the last measurement persists. So we're gonna create, we're gonna left click and drag out um, from the measurement tool and see what we get. We're greeted with the ruler icon and an X showing us where we're going to start, um, where the origin point will start from. So we're gonna left click, drag out, I like the gradient and bezier tool. If we hold control, we can get a straight line. And if we move left, we can get increments of left. And if we move right, we get increments on the right side, you know, in terms of the angle of the line. Now, moving on to the angle and the length, you know, when we let go, we see that the nodes become circles that represent the start and the end. And we have a blue line, a red line, and an arc that connects the two. So first up, let's talk about the blue line. The blue line talks about the actual length that you're measuring to. The red line talks about the perpendicular um, width that you measured from. The red arc in between is the angle in between. And these two metrics here represent the length and the angle. So the angle is has a green box and the length has a brownish dark brownish box so you can separate them knowing that the length is default millimeters and the degrees is default de um, and the angle is default degrees good so the measurement tool updates itself real time as we move the pool origin and we're just going to demonstrate that by coming down to this box here And we can see it's updating itself real time, you know, which is useful, you know, when you have to move in between objects. And you can see how the measurement moves around. Now, whenever we have a situation now where the measurement tool goes and detects an edge, it creates an X. And we see the X right here. And that X represents. Um, when it detects the edge of an object in between its measurement radius. And that's something to keep in mind. And also, when it does that now, it adds another measure. And we can see the measure being 137.21 millimeters. And this line represents where that measure is. So if we look at it, we can see from the X to that, to the origin point is this measurement. The full measurement is represented here which is the 193.45 millimeters and we can see the angle between our top line you know the top line and the blue line is 17.74 presently so it updates real time and when it intersects an object we're gonna see an X so you can when you see an X you know that it's measuring you know um, from an edge of an object so when we actually go into the tool control box of the measurement tool, we're greeted with um, a few tools here, that a few options here that we can use. The first thing I want you to understand about these tool sets is that the first four is talking, the first four options that you see is all to do with how we want that information displayed. The next four toggle options talk about you know, what information we want displayed when we're using the measurement tool. Sometimes some measurement options will become obtrusive and you don't want them to interfere with what you actually want to read. And so you can toggle them on and off as you please. And the last four talk about the output state, you know, how we can output 
the um, measurements after we come out of the measurement tool or even in the measurement tool itself so the first one of these five icons here doesn't deal with output of the measurement tool it just deals with the reverse of measure <coughs> sorry and we're going to go through that one quickly and what that is good for is the angle so what it does is that it subtracts the current angle from 180 and flips the arc to represent the um, to represent that new angle there the alternate angle to this so if we subtract this from 180 we get the new angle that's going to be formed by reversing the angle so we're going to activate reverse the measure good and we subtract it we see that we get 159.04 and that's useful for the angle um, measure that's in useful for the angle metric um, when we want the alternate angle when we want to see the alternate angle so right here that's what we see let's click off uh, let's flip the measurement again and as we can see as we do new measurements it persists so you have to click it um, toggle it off if you want to go back to the original or the default measurement angle so we're going to look at the first four and the first ones are pretty obvious but we're going to go through them just the same and where they're useful the font size increase now the default font size when you activate the measurement tool is 10 um, 10 pixel points and that may be too small for your viewing needs so if you can toggle and in sorry not toggle but you can increase and decrease the fonts you know um to the needs that you have you know without becoming ob intrusive or obtrusive to or obstructive sorry without becoming obstructive to the diagram that you have you know so you decide what font you want and that option is here second is the precision and the precision talks about you know the accuracy of decimal place placement and right now the precision is two that is the default value and that talks about how many decimal places after the point you know you're going to report your metric to so right now it's reporting to two decimal places if we increase it to three you know we get to see three decimal places here and this three decimal places here and three decimal places for the angle as well so this upper this affects the angle and the length values and when we um, decrease the accuracy of decimal place placement, you know, it will round the last value off. So here we get one, here we get four. So there is rounding on the values. You know, you can keep that in mind. Scale. Now, the scale in a lot of situations in diagrams, we cannot possibly um, represent the original dimensions of whatever we're measuring on our drawing program or on um, our pieces of paper because you know the metrics are just so large we'd get an unreasonable diagram that wouldn't serve the purpose that we have to be able to analyze the whole thing as an the whole diagram as a whole so as such you know um, we use scaling we use our one to two scaling or one to four scaling for every one unit we're representing four in real life because we honestly most in a lot of situations we cannot possibly represent all that information on one diagram and inscape is the same so unless you want to crash your computer and measure meters on, on inscape you know it's wise for you to use a scale and the measurement tool helps you to use the scale also so what happens is that in the same area that we that we are measuring if we measure down just um, create the measurement here measure down in this same area the blue line that we're measuring the scale you know will be increased to reflect the scale will be increased to reflect the um, the measurements that you want to be shown within the same um, length so right now it's at a, it's at 200% let me change it to the original one the original or the default value is 100% and 100% represents the one to one value so this is the actual measurement it's measured 63.25 millimeters within the inscape space if we want to measure um, 
if we know that our measurement is double that then what we can do is you know increase the percentage to 200 percent and then if we can increase the percentage to 200 percent we'll see these values double good and if we increase it to 400 percent we'll see it quadruple good so in the same distance it represents the higher millimeter value um the higher scale and this is very very useful for when you want your measurements you know to reflect the real life values within the same distance okay and the next part is the units which is pretty self-explanatory we can change the units according to what inkscape units offer and they offer six units you know so you can change any unit that you want depending on what you're measuring so the first four do with how the information is displayed the next four talk about what we want what information we want visible good so i had set up some layer information beforehand for this section so i'm just going to activate that now toggle this on i want to see some boxes come up if you want to you activate the layer um dialog box you can go to layer in the file menu and click layers down here Control shift l or you can um or you can hit Control shift l sorry so that is the keyboard option uh, so we have for each one that we're going to toggle on so we're going to look at each one separately and the first one is the first and last so in the first and last talks about the first value which is the origin value and the last value which is the pool value you know those metrics can be reported but by default they're not reported because they're not seen as very useful in most situations but there are times that you may want it actually seen so in the case that you want it seen the two metrics at these two nodes you can toggle this on and let's just scroll in so that you can see a bit better all right so the metric for this and the metric for this we can toggle this on and off so we're going to toggle it on uh, we see the zero here and the zero here so in case we want that actually shown we can toggle it on and off the next part is between items now remember that we said that the measurement tool once it detects an edge of an object or path in its radius it creates an X to show the measurements in between now these are what we call in between measurements right here this is the full length measurement and this is the full arc so in the case that you do not want to see these in between measurements you just want the length you know maybe you've got several options and these measurements are confusing you because we see so many different ones even though it helps us because it changes the length measurement to a blue once we have in between measurements and we can see it's a different color now and we also have the outside measurement here it may still be confusing and you may not want these to show so you can toggle this off here We're using the show measurements in between items toggle option and you're only going to see the full length and as natural you see the full length the blue box disappears and we get the original brown box here that represents the length from the origin point to the pool point next is hidden items now hidden items is when we have two objects and the two objects are operating under the um, layer hierarchy and they're covering each other now in this instance we know we can see that it's the actual beach blue that's covering the teal blue you know so the beach blue we know innately is the highest is higher in the hierarchy than the teal blue so whatever area the teal blue has been covered by the beach blue is hidden area now your your measurement tool can detect the hidden area and and measure those hidden areas even when you know you you may not want them to so if you don't want it to measure the area that's covered by objects in the hierarchy then you can toggle this option on and off so we activate the measurement tool <coughs> show hidden intersections so we're just going to draw it out so to show you what we mean and we can see the two x's showing themselves so it's detecting that there is um an intersection underneath between the objects here and you may not want that for your measurement needs and we can see this is this would be the hidden area right here because the teal is underneath the blue box this is the edge of the blue box and it's detecting the hidden area so what we can do is that we can toggle this off 
and we see that this x doesn't exist anymore it's just measuring straight from this blue box it's ignoring the hidden area good toggle this back on and lastly is layers so in the same way that the hidden layers hidden items work and in between items work the layers work also but for layered objects so in a situation where you know you have more than one layer active and you don't want it to be measuring across all the different layers you only want it measuring the active layer that you're using right now you can toggle this option so right here if we draw out we can see despite these two being in two different layers and they are in two different layers let me just represent show you that open the layers um, dialog box and if we toggle this off we see everything disappear in layer 2 toggle this off everything disappears in layer 1 the green is on layer 1 the blue beach blue is on layer 2 <coughs> so if we don't want it to measure across layers we can toggle that last option this option right here and what this will do because we have layer 1 on right now we're active on layer 1 you can see that the blue box is just not going to be measured because that's on layer 2 so let's toggle it off and we see just that it's just measuring the green box it's not measuring the intersections or anything it's just the green box is measuring until the end pool point good moving on to the last four the last four options deal with the output that you want after you leave the measurement tool or within the measurement tool so we're going to look at the first one and the first one talks about the phantom measure and the phantom measure is simply um, you freezing the measure in time in the measurement tool so that you can use the measurement tool again and compare the two measurements so right here we have a measurement if we were to create a new measurement from here it would replace this old measurement and we'd lose all this information but say we want to compare these two measurements right here we can use the phantom measure and you see the phantom measure now takes the current measure and turns it into gray lines and gray boxes and then oh, let's go again use the phantom measure and now if we create a new measurement and drag out we can see that we have the two measurements to compare right now so we can say that everything is compared between the two now without the phantom measurement Tool, within the measurement tool you wouldn't be able to compare because you know as you create a new measurement it would replace the old one good so okay Let's zoom out a bit all right so you replace the old one great so for the next tool uh, for the next option we have the measurement to guides and this does exactly that this takes the measurements that we've made and and puts the let the the paths that we have into guides so if we activate this we're not going to see anything at first because guides are naturally hidden but if you can press shift and the tall bar or the upright bar or you can go to path is it path no, we can go to view and go to guides and we can see how the guides are operated and interestingly the guides that are created by the measurement tool are purple instead of blue and they have the names you know of the measures so it starts from it tells you the start it tells you the end it tells you where we have crossings also and this is this can be very useful when you find yourself in a situation that you need to use the measurement data after the measurement tool is gone so we're just going to toggle this off with the shortcut key and the next option deals with convert the item to objects and paths so this will convert all in information that you see in the measurements to text elements path elements and object elements respectively where the path is the lines and the X and the objects are the boxes and the text is the measurements well I don't know if the boxes will turn into objects actually I've not tested that part so we're going to go to activate this now and see if it does 
Let's see if it's an object or a path. Yes, it does change it to an object. So this this measurement now can be circled. It's a it's a oblong rectangle object. And we can see all the measurements, all the everything persists here. Now I don't see the arc, but I know that if you do the measurement to outside of you know any of these things right here, any object, you're supposed to see the arc as well. Um, we represented. Let me just check and see it. Right, we see the arc here kept. Good. Not sure why it disappears when you're measuring the object, but the arc is kept when we just separate it from the object. So if you want to ensure that the arc is kept, you know, you may want to take the the object away from the measurement, you know, before you activate the tool that says convert to item. Great. I'm just going to delete that and the last one is when we just want to show the length dimension as a dimension label you know so say we want this labeled here so we want the 425.10 millimeters as a dimension label here with two arrows that gives us the option here with using the mark dimension and the offset tells us how far we want that dimension to be close to the measurement close to this blue line right here so if you want it far from the blue line we increase the offset if you want it close we decrease the offset so we have our 10 now let's see what happens and we get the measurement here with two arrows and the length here so the length with the two arrows is represented and this exists outside of the measurement tool so if we click off the measurement tool we see that it exists here good and that represent and that covers the measurement tool very effective um very useful for precision work definitely something i'm going to use in the future if you enjoy this tutorial you know give it a thumbs up if you have something more to say about the measurement tool or you misunderstand or you have a you have a question to ask about the measurement tool you know you can go ahead and leave it in the comments We're going to move on to the next tool in the Inkscape Basic series. But until we see each other again, get up and design a new dawn. Later.